I've seen not so much books that I've reviewed, but books that I probably missed out on, where the synopsis is very much like they finish university and they're in a they're in a dead end job. They're in a job that they don't enjoy. They've, this is something else that I don't appreciate. I didn't appreciate in my twenties, and now that I'm in my thirties, I'm kind of like, oh, I can see why people do it. But every female character from a certain genre was a journalist or a marketing executive or an advertising or a high powered lawyer it's like not everybody does that I worked in shipping for 14 years like there is nobody out there who writes about somebody who works in a boring dead-end admin role like I was in but I don't really want to just hear about all the marketing executives and all the advertising executives anymore I kind of want to see real more real office jobs out there now I think that's starting to come through a bit more where people are like oh yeah marketing isn't the be all and end all is it no it's not <laughs> let's, find a, let's find a different industry to work with now please <laughs> Yeah, I think marketing for a while was seen as kind of glamorous. And now everyone's like, oh, it's actually not. It's getting really boring and overdone. And it's not that interesting. Actually. Yeah. I think Mad Men helped put that that little rumor to bed because before then it was always like, oh, yeah, you could go to the parties and it was great. And the Mad Men came along and you were like, oh, they're all idiots. Like, why would you want to work in marketing? <laughs> Yeah, one thing I tried to do when set when starting what happens in New York is both of my characters have dead end jobs. Yeah, and the ones who have good jobs don't necessarily like their good jobs because the pressures of them take such a toll on their mental and physical health. Yeah, and in the opening chapter, my main character rage quits her job because her boss is a misogynistic pig, and I have to say that writing those couple of chapters was actually quite cathartic for me. Yeah. based on previous experience that I've had because I don't think people do talk about the fact that regardless of what job you're in sometimes it's just not a healthy working environment and it's okay to say I am done yeah absolutely and I think that more books need to say that that there are so many readers out there who need to know that going to university is okay not going to university is okay having a crappy job when you're 17 is okay having a crappy job when you're 30 is okay if you enjoy it if you don't enjoy it get out and do something else and I think we're now starting to see that change in certainly in romance and like women's literature where it is coming across more that people don't have to stay in the job that they're in you don't have to have a job for 50 years anymore you can you can move about there's so many other jobs out there and so many other skills that people can use and I think that's a nice thing that people are getting into now yeah, I agree. And I think it's really important to show that because despite how many people say that romance and other genres don't set examples, they 100% do. I learned oh, yeah. about healthy relationships from reading fiction. I certainly didn't re- learn it from the people around me. No, absolutely. I'm exactly the same. I-, I definitely learned more from reading books than I did from a lot of the people that I grew up with and around. Yeah, books do set examples. And I think when you see those characters doing these things, building that resilience and kind of the growth that you mentioned before that some of these fantasy books miss, it does have that subconscious effect in the same way that like listening to the Spice Girls had a subconscious effect on millions of girls and the messages of like girl power and safe sex, it does get in your head, even though you don't necessarily understand it at age six. Yeah, exactly. And I think we are now in a world where we're trying to make sure that everybody is represented. And I love that. I love that we're trying to get more representation, more diversity. But now we have to look at the real nitty gritty of it and go as as low down as possible and say to people, look, yes, a fantasy book, you will never, you're not going to be a wizard. I'm very sorry, you're not Harry Potter. <laughs> but if you read a romance book, yes, you can get a job and find the man of your dreams, if you want, or the woman of your dreams, or the person of your dreams. But you don't have to stay in that job just because somebody in a somebody in a different book did. Read this book where they got out and they did something different with their life and they 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 found that being happy was by being themselves and being by themselves. They didn't have a romance, you know. Maybe let's start writing books where the happy ending is uh, just one and off living on her own with a ton of cats and a biscuit tin I don't know like, <laughs> let's, let's change the narration where it's okay to be on your own as well it's okay to be in a relationship it's okay to be on your own it's okay to be different it's okay to be the same as everybody and I think that's what a lot of authors are now trying to tap into a bit more that it's okay not to have the 2.4 children and the the nice big house in London and the the beautiful handsome husband it's okay to 
just want to be on your own with your dog or your cat or your rabbit. And it's just like, let's just make that a a new normal as well. Yeah, definitely. One thing I quite like about the paranormal women's fiction genre, which is kind of my comfort read genre at the moment, is the fact that they nearly all open with a woman who's getting divorced. Yes. And that's not like kind of some schadenfreude about the fact they're getting divorced. It's the fact that they're taking control and going, I am done being your doormat. I am done with a shitty job because they usually (laughs) quit their job as well. And then they move to like some really creepy town that's got like shifters and where shifters and werewolves. What am I saying? They're practically the same. Um, (laughs) That have got all these magical creatures that introduce them to this whole new world. And it's almost like... um, Because, you know, like this whole thing about like you're over the hill when you're 40 and the number 40 means death and all that stuff. My mom had this mug once when she turned 40 and it said that life begins at 40. Mm -hmm. And it almost feels like that's what that genre is. It's about embracing your life and fulfilling your potential, even if society tells you that you're over the hill because you've got a few wrinkles or because your hair's turning gray or because your husband has gone off with another woman. I think that's exactly it. And I am the same now. This time of year is like my paranormal witchy autumn kind of genre and I don't read as much romance now this is like romance is summer winter is my paranormal witchy season and I love that because it's right when I got divorced eight years ago I started reading more books about divorced women and women who had had a huge change in their life and it did I was 25 when I got divorced it did make me feel more validated and it was like it's okay I'm gonna be okay because this woman did it and although it's fiction you kind of it's like you said you do take your role models from and it's like hang on a second I can absolutely be like this character I can I can do what I like I can go where I want and I think seeing that in more books would definitely help people who maybe haven't had nice healthy relationships go it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to absolutely get back out there get on your feet go to a completely different village settle in and find a werewolf <laughs> <laughs> yeah when I was working on the ghost call book I didn't like necessarily think about the fact that Neve could be a role model but I've realized how much of her is like me not the divorced part she's um, been widowed and divorced she doesn't have a lot of luck I've been Bless in one relationship her. Yeah, exactly. She's had a tough time and mm. then she realizes her mother has lied to her entire life and also lied to her daughter. Um, so it's her mother who, her mother's dead, by the way, and her mother's still lying in ghost form. And um, I've realized, like, actually, how my resilience has been channeled into my character because Neve is the kind of person, like, yeah, okay, everything's going to shit, but I've got to keep going. So let's just keep going. And I didn't realize how rare that mindset was until I had a conversation with one of my friends recently. And she was like, yeah, I love the fact that you just keep going. I'm like, well, I don't see any other option. And my characters are exactly the same. It's like something happens, you don't like it, but you can sit and you can wrap yourself in the duvet and never get out again. But A, that's not a story and B, that's not a life. So yeah, your story will be about four pages long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it wouldn't be that interesting, to be honest, because no. most stories are about transformation, right? 